Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Herd Fit Podcast with Dr. Sam Marie and myself, Coach David Syverson. This podcast is aimed at helping anyone and everyone looking to enhance their healthy lifestyle through fitness, nutrition, and most importantly, mindset. All right. Welcome back to the Herd Fit Podcast. I am Coach David Syverson. I'm here with my co-host, Dr. and Coach Sam Marie. And we are going to, Sam, show us your sweatshirt for my, all of our uh, 68 YouTube views. <laughs> CrossFit Health Summit. Sam was actually in Austin, Texas a couple weeks ago at the, is it an annual once a year? Uh, I don't know. This okay. was the first one I think they've had. Yeah, they haven't had one in a long time. And under new leadership, this probably is the first one, CrossFit Health Summit. And this is, oh, look, you, you tell me, Sam, who is this for? It's for anyone interested in health uh, and also CrossFit. So it was actually about almost two, 300 people, but only about 30 doctors, apparently. Don't you need to be a doctor to go? No, you don't. Okay. Most it of used, them were It not. used to be something like that, right? Like a yeah. level one or something where you had to be a doctor to go? There was an MD level one, okay. which, uh, which was for physicians, but that, or I mean, healthcare providers, but that was- uh, just for like a medically oriented L1. Mm -hmm. This one was for anyone who was just interested in health and CrossFit. But Interesting. I actually was under the impression you had to be MD. No, no. But yeah. I did get uh, CME credits, okay. you know, continuing medical education credits for it. Which you have to do, right? Which I need. So it was great. So I could write it off as a business expense. Oh, that's awesome. Great. Yeah. Uh, so that's so so first class five star hotel. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, why'd you go? And, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was a little skeptical, honestly. Uh, I've seen some CrossFit science and some of it's good. Some of it's not so good, just like all sciences, really. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I wanted to see how CrossFit would present what they felt was health. OK. And um, just for my perspective. So I have done research uh, and I'm only going to talk about this, not to brag, but because we do have actually now a fair number of listeners who are not within our gym, mm -hmm. and they might not know my own background in yeah. this. Yeah, let's give your background. And so that I can talk about this, so when you hear my perspective, you're not like, oh, this guy is just like, whatever. Um, so I, this is my 10th year CrossFitting, so I am a real CrossFit guy, um, and I coach here at CrossFit Bison. I am a plastic surgeon, um, and I do mostly cosmetic surgery now, but I once was a real doctor. <laughs> I, do, uh, I did research as an undergrad in medical school and my surgical training, um, I did spend two full time, two full years in residency in the lab full time studying bone biology and mechanical force in orthopedic research lab, and I am a co-author on twelve papers and four book chapters. Wow! So, well, that's not that many actually compared to most. More than me. <laughs> so, um, and so I understand what research is and what good research is, bad research is. I know Glassman's really on a huge kick about bad research, mm -hmm. but I understand it's these are human beings just like they are anyone else. They're not any better or worse. So listening to what they said, it was really interesting because you can't go too deep into the weeds on this stuff, but I wanted to hear what they thought the cutting edge concepts were about health because truly speaking in medical school, and they pointed it out, nutrition, longevity, you know, preventative medicine is given like almost nothing. Yeah. You've said that before. Yeah. yeah. And so this, honestly, most of what I've learned about these topics has been through my experience with CrossFit at CrossFit Bison. Mm. And so I wanted to see what would the scientists say about these topics. And it's, it's interesting because you are one of several doctors that we have at the gym. We have a lot of nurses at the gym. There, there's a lot of medical professionals within the Bison community and then the, the global CrossFit community as well. And I always feel... And, and all of them here, especially, they're they're humble, they're modest about it. I always feel like their their interpretation on health, how it relates to CrossFit and our nutrition and reset, is so valuable. Like whenever they talk about anything health induced, like I remember listening to Kathleen talk about gut health one time, and I was just like, I could listen to her talk for hours just talking about that 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 realm of it, and that's just one part of it. Yeah, I love all our physio, our nutrition people, everyone here. I learned so much from them. This is not the stuff you would never you would normally get at like your PCP mm -hmm. office or something right. like that. Explain the logistics of it. How long was it? Um, was it morning, night, break, intermission? How many days? Were, 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 how long were you out there? And what was the day to day flow like? Yeah, it was Austin, Texas. It was one 
I mean, the actual conference was one day. It was on a Saturday from like nine to five, basically. Okay. I got in early because they did have a workout programmed if you wanted to do it and sign up uh, with- The day before? The day before on Friday. So I flew out Friday morning, got there, uh, went to CrossFit Central, which is in Austin. It's a big time gym. Uh, Yeah. Chase Ingram's there. You know, those guys. Uh, Adrian Bosman uh, ran it. And it was a pretty good workout. I mean, I will tell you this. Those, we talked about the old school versus new school. You know what old school is? I will say it in one word, uncompromising. Mm. These guys don't cut corners. And I will say this because the workout, now think about it. These are not elite athletes. These are people showing up for a healthcare conference. Could be anyone. Anybody. Yeah. So this was the workout. Four rounds, like fight gone bad. One minute dumbbell step ups. They had they already had it out. Uh, Twenty inches, thirty five pounds dumbbells. Two of them. One minute max cal row. One minute barbell snatches. One thirty five ninety five. Whoa! And one <laughs> after minute the, after the row. Yeah. And oh. I'm telling you, dude, like it was packed in there. Yeah. There were it was packed. And so for Bowsman to say, you know what, we're doing snatches. Like you would not program that in a really crowded gym with all these people. And he was like, don't drop on other people. And then he was like, all right, teams of three, go find people that have the same snatch weight as you. <laughs> so <laughs> instead of like, okay, who can snatch 85? Who can snatch 95? My blood's boiling right, right now. <laughs> right, right. Like this guy's like old school. Yeah, like, and figure so, it out yourself. Yeah, so I'm like running around looking for the skinniest, weakest people because <laughs> I, I don't want to do 135. Yeah. And, and so I find two guys and I'm like, are you guys like okay with 95 or 105, maybe 150? They're like, what, well, whatever, dude. Yeah. And so then we get together and then they do the whiteboard talk real quick. And then these two guys sandbag me and they're like, ah, let's just do 135. It's the- <laughs> and, and I'm like, no. And so, <laughs> so you know, we had, but thank, thankfully, we had been doing snatch work. Right. So, true. so all I did was say, That's a good way for you. Yeah. Let me just try it. And the good thing about that workout is it's okay if you get four reps and so you know yeah. some guys can get 14 you yeah, know it's yeah, a, yeah. you're not you don't have to cycle it back and forth that is correct so you only have one minute and so i just thought like quick hips get that barbell straight path all those things and i managed to get out of five per minute or that's so, awesome which after a max cal row i'll tell oh, yeah. yeah i'll take that getting off the row and then getting over there so so those guys so basically and bosman is uncompromising so you watch one guy and then they count your reps, so you go back and forth, right? Like okay. you do the whole workout, and then you flip, and then you count reps for for the first thing. Okay, it's it, 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 so that you can get t- twice the number of people in. Did you beat the other guys? Uh, the guy actually did ninety five pounds. Oh, uh, yeah. So okay. I, I didn't know. So yeah. like, so but Bosman comes in like deep into the third round, and the guy is like, you know, not like kind of pressing out just a little bit, and he's like, you know catch it in the receiving position with arms locked. Right. And I'm kind of like, he just did like 90 snatches. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of said it under my breath a little bit. I, I don't know if Bosman heard me, but he just totally ignored me <laughs> and was like, it, it doesn't matter. Like, these guys are hard core. And that's why... It's always like a breath of fresh air when you're around those guys. Like level one, level two, level two, t- level two research. It's a great word too, uncompromising. Oh, I mean... Forget about like you know cutting anyone a break. These guys are right there with it, mm. and that was the same with Nicole Carroll when she opened. Um, it was like an old school revival preacher. So you know, again, I always I actually kind of think of it more and more like a religion. So you know, yeah. you have the you go to a, a service and maybe they're they're playing really like like nice ethereal modern music that you sing. These guys are singing old school hymns. Yep. Out of the hymnal that was probably like seventy five years uh, old, yeah, like they aren't doing anything new age. Yep. this is old school. She yep. pulled out the definition of fitness, you know, work capacity over broad, you know, time modal domains. She quoted the hundred words. She put them right up there. Mm-hmm. Like this ain't no like I love it new definition of CrossFit. Like you talked about old school, new school, none of that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and she said like experiment on yourself. N of one you know, observe and measure, talked about, you know, the party bus. She said, I, when I retire, I want to go around and grab people and put them in a bus and get them to start CrossFit. Mm. Like, it really was like, 
fire and brimstone. Yeah. And that's the thing about these old school guys. And that's why I wonder, we talk about the, the survival of CrossFit or how it's going to go. Yep. Old school guys are fully in the camp. They they trained under Glassman. They rose up with Glassman. And that's that's their mentality until they die. Would you even use the word stubborn? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said uncompromising. Right. Because I don't. I don't know. Sovereign. Sovereign has a, a negative ethos yeah, behind yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. So. So anyway, that's 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 how they feel. So Nicole Carroll opened it off. Do you know? I mean, do you have a number of how many people went up there and spoke, and about how long they were speaking for? Yeah. So there were like maybe five, six speakers. Is this a straight shot, nine to five? I give you a little intermission, some breaks, and a lunch, okay. and all yeah. that. And um, yeah. So the first. Uh, speaker, they all spoke maybe about 20, 30 minutes. Rhonda Patrick, she's pretty popular with a lot of women. She has some website or something called Found My Fitness. She's like a longevity health and wellness guru, PhD. Her three concepts were exercise, and I'm just going to rip through them because yeah, I, I'm yeah, not yeah. going to talk about their, I just throw out the concepts, not any of what they justified it for. Okay. Exercise, muscle mass, and heat exposure. So she basically said VO2 max correlates with life expectancy. And I had a lot of questions about that because okay. if all you care about is VO2 max, you know, that raises a lot of questions, right? About training right. and lifting, lift, yeah. snatch and snatching. All sorts of yeah, stuff. Right. Um, but, you know, she talked about a Norwegian four by four interval training protocol, a four minute max intensity to increase your VO2 max. It, it sounded very hinshaw y, actually. Okay. Um, and um, she talked about the benefits to your heart, the, how lactate that's generated. And exercise works as a singling mo molecule for neurotransmitters and glucose regulation and all this stuff. And then I think the most interesting thing was actually two interesting things was exercise snacks. So if you're like sitting in an office all day, three days, three times a day, just get up and do like one or two minutes of exercise. Like she made us get up and do 30 seconds of high knees okay. as far as hard as we could. Okay. And it was you know, it wakes you up. Huberman's talked about that yeah. as well. So yeah. these, these are very common types of tricks. Um, the other thing she said was that you should have at least 1.6 grams per kilo of protein for skeletal muscle maintenance. Okay. Which um, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not even going to talk about it. Right. Um, Omega-3 fatty acids, she said four to five grams a day to help stop age-related atrophy. I currently take two. Okay. So I'm like, hmm, I'm going to look into that. Uh talked about how as you get older, you still need to continue resistance training, but it's not so much about the load capacity, uh, how heavy your loads are, but it's to failure. So like, and which makes sense. Like if you can't bench 225 for reps, then just bench 135, but just go to absolute failure. Right. And then that's safer, you know, works for people. Mm -hmm. Like I, I believe that. Interesting. Yeah. Which works for CrossFit too, because if you scale a workout and you're not going heavy, but you're still going to failure for yourself. Yeah. You're getting benefit. Yeah. I agree with that. I, I would 100% agree with that behind amount of volume and amount of work that you're trying to output here. Yeah. Should you ever go for a one rep max in general? I think that's going to be another to a topic that is debated. Right. I do think there's value in that. It just should not be every time you lift. Right. And the thing is, but if you do scale a workout, you still need to go to failure. Right. You can't just be like, all right, I'm going to scale and take it easy. No, right. it's about your intensity. Right. Um, the heat thing, I, I know Huberman, Huberman has a great podcast about heat and uh, how you need to get pretty hot, like 170, 80 degrees. You need to get your heart rate up to a certain degree to get benefit. Uh, yeah, I like heat. I'll, I'll take that over a cold plunge. <laughs> um, Gabrielle, did that come up at all? Cold, what cold plunging? They did not. Okay. And, and thank God, because I didn't want to hear <laughs> good evidence about it, or that would have made me like feel guiltier about avoiding a, a cold plunge. Um, Gabrielle Lyon is uh, she's this really jacked uh, doctor, functional medicine physician. She does mul muscle centric medicine. She's very aggressive. Uh, she basically talked about muscle is good, like muscle centric. So she talked about it's the largest organ of our body. It helps us metabolize glucose, oxidize lipids. It's our amino acid reservoir. Um, she said, we don't have an obesity epidemic. We have a lack of muscle epidemic. And that's kind of an interesting you know, way of thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. so, like that. so it's very simple, what, what? basically a prescription through CrossFit, like resistance training, high protein, low carb diet. Um, she talks about taking even more protein, like two to three grams a kilo. So those two are kind of running into each other a little bit? A little. Like, th there's a little bit. None of these guys are actually CrossFitters. These are, okay. these are all 
independent contractor types. Yeah, they just have their own sort of health space that they're and they were invited to come which I I respect that. Yeah, it I was do. it was yeah. interesting. And um and she did like it was so funny cuz she opened with um I mean, you know, CrossFit probably started in a garage gym or something, didn't it? Like yeah. she didn't even know where CrossFit <laughs> but, like she's just talking and so you realize they don't know much about CrossFit, but maybe that's not so bad because this no. stuff is CrossFit adjacent. Yep. It it runs parallel. Um she talked which was interesting about protein intake. Most of us take most of our protein at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Like we take a little at breakfast, maybe a little more at lunch, but our big protein intake is in our dinner. Yep. And so she thinks protein cycling, bigger in, in the morning, big, uh, big in the morning and at night, and then pretty light in the middle helps with protein absorption. So, so she has all these concepts about that, Okay. which isn't bad. Also, you only get 130 grams of carbs a day. You're only allowed to eat more if you earn it through exercise. Okay. And you can't eat more than 40 grams of carbs a meal. Did you bring up 40? Okay. Does that bring it? It's funny because I'm in a low carb state right now. Yeah. I fat low carb and I'm, yeah. I'm loving it. Um, Kind of upset that I didn't do it throughout the fall, but um, but because of legends. But um, when she said, brings up numbers like that, is that like an average number for based on size or just like, you know, what if, what if you, you me and Susan can't eat? Right, that. the same. Right. right, I don't know. Okay, uh, I'm just throwing it out there. Okay, like I'm, I was writing down as fast as I could. Yeah, yeah. Were both of these people low carb centric? Pretty much. Yeah, okay. yeah. They all, they're everyone. No, that's one... such an interesting debate to me. Yeah, because so many performance nutrition coaches are all about high carb. Like they get offended sometimes when. I, so the performance part of it, there was a panel and they talked about carbs, and I'll mention. Okay. That there. Okay. Yes. Um, Tom McCoy, who you mentioned, he's opening up a clinic with Proven at their new Nashville. McCoy Medical. Yeah. So he talked about the power of community. He's a co-owner of Chagrin Falls CrossFit in Ohio. Um, he's a doctor. He just, he gave examples of different people who use CrossFit and the power of community to help either with their recovery as substance abusers, um, people with PTSD, like military people, the one who founded Valor Fit, Troy, yep. and how isolation and loneliness are significant risk factors mm. um, in terms of your life. And how he quotes, maximum happiness is found in groups of 100 to 200 people, which he parallels to a CrossFit. Interesting. Yeah. Like, that's that's where your max networking sort of capability is. Very interesting. And he, the reason why he's opening these integrated health clinics with affiliates, he has one now in Nashville at Proven and Northeast Ohio, is because there's very, um, there's a huge burnout of primary care providers. There's no value placed on preventative counseling. So putting them into these uh, gyms will help with that. I'm really intrigued by that. Um, so I've looked into a, for into what Proven's doing on a few different levels for yeah. a few different reasons. Yeah. And I heard their CEO, Nick Johnson, talk about it when he was with uh, Coffee Pods and Wads, mm. um, who episode with Hiller. Really good listen if anyone wants to go into those guys and listen to him to talk to Hiller and Coffee Pods and Wads. Sorry, I forgot the guy's name. Um, that 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 could be a huge future part of CrossFit is being partnered up with a... What would you call that kind of medical practice? More like preventative care or is this something different in the medical industry? Yeah, like a wellness clinic, I'm yeah. sure, something yeah. like that. I mean... I don't know the finance stuff, and they talk about it a little in one of the panels, like, would Medicare cover CrossFit? Like, what if you, you know, how do we get physicians to prescribe CrossFit and have that financially work? Because mm. can you just get a patient to say, hey, try CrossFit. It's 200 bucks a month, 250 bucks a month. They're going to be like, what? We have some members that their health insurance, uh, they, they, those... Yeah, health savings accounts. Health will, savings accounts you can pay it. for membership. So basically you can pay, you know, your, your untaxed, income can pay for we're saving some people money through that yeah so there are ways of yeah. financially dealing with that mm -hmm. in, on some level on a state and federal level in terms of coverage it got they were going into the weeds on that and that was really complicated that's where I, I can't follow that stuff anymore I neither can I yeah. um so then they had a panel called simple not easy the street one of the street parking founders was uh, on there some other people. They talked about what hard challenges in life was. Um, and I would say the biggest takeaway for me is, for us as CrossFitters, working out is no longer hard. Like, it's hard, but, like, for some people, 
getting your taxes done on time is hard. Like that's the hard thing or, right. or whatever else you have at home. And so it was talking about using that mental capacity that you've built up at home or at the gym to tackle the stuff you keep procrastinating and not doing at home. And that hit home for me mm. because there's so much stuff I'm like, oh, yeah, I can go in and kill like real kill myself on a wad. But then I have a task that I've left for like two weeks that Same. I'm not doing. Same. So it's like, like a pile of mail sitting on the counter. Right. So like, why are we CrossFitters if we're not doing the hard things, which are the things we don't want to do? Right. You know, the things we avoid. Um and then, uh, and then the recovery people. There were some people who deal with substance uh, use uh, disorders and and manage recovery with CrossFit. Is that it's like like fitness and health is like being in recovery. It's forever. Like you don't stop. You you never stop being in recovery, and you never stop working out or trying to stay healthy. Right. The minute you stop, you you're. It's not like you become fit and you're done. Right. And and I've heard that from many other places. Um, they talked a little bit about. Uh, glucagon like peptide agonists those are the glp1 ozempic they never mention ozempic like they don't even say it they just say glp agonists and they're seeing so many commercials for ozempic now oh, dude, and, the, and news stories i i will not get into it right now yeah, but yeah. they have philosophies about like is it good is it bad um there's no doubt it's a really powerful tool mm. how it's used the manner in which it's used can it be abused yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, the long-term consequences. These are all issues. I have many close friends who are on them. I've seen great benefits. I've also seen not so great benefits. It's like a very, very complicated issue. Okay. Um, basically, there were two sides on it. Like the McCoy guys, like never prescribed it. Too powerful. I tell a patient, listen, you want to try this? Give me, give me sixty days of exercise and diet. Right. And then if you still want to try it, um, I'll put you on it. He said, I've never had a taker. Mm, so, and then I've had, and then there was someone else, I think, uh, I forget who was like, well, it, it can be useful, like in conjunction with other stuff. So there's a lot of different philosophies about it. Okay. Um, the thing that I think you would have found most interesting was the performance versus fitness panel. Uh, and Graciana Rubio, who's the uh, Wall Street weightlifter guy. Great Instagram follow, Wall Street weightlifter. Oh my God. His last post, he was doing 335 strict press for reps. <laughs> For reps. So ridiculous. And the dude spoke so well, yeah. like so well. And I talked to him afterwards. He he collared me for like 30 minutes. Did he? Oh, my God. He has, he's a good talker. Yeah. And he, he was like, are you going to the after party? And I missed him at the after party. But he would he, I, he would have talked to me. He, I mean, he looks like a meathead, but yeah. he speaks like Einstein. Yeah. So basically, it's about people interested in the performance or competitive side of fitness. And they talked about sustainable training over years. So they were like, what is your program? Do you want to make the game in two years, mm -hmm. five years, seven years? Like your programming and your ramp up, totally different. Mm -hmm. Do you want to stay healthy? If you want to go for the games in two years, that's very unhealthy. Your training will be so unhealthy. Yeah, we've talked about that it's a lot. It's insane yeah. how unhealthy it's that is. It's going to be too much, battling through pain and injury. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the way you, it's going to have to be, though. Right. So they talked about sustainable training versus not sustainable training. They also talked about opportunity costs to make the games. What price will you have to pay? There were people who looked at people's programming and literally like high-level coaches, and they said, you're going to get divorced <laughs> in a year <laughs> with this programming. <laughs> like, it's not going to happen. They said, we should have recovery coaches like we have strength and conditioning coaches. Mm -hmm. um, and the injury happens because, so it's funny. They talked about how runners, like orthopedists will see runners. And you know what they say? Only amateurs get stress fractures. Mm -hmm. So if you're a pro and you know how you're training, your injury risk is much less likely than someone who is just going for it. Got it. So, so... Pro athletes. What's I mean, the difference between pro and someone that's going after it? Recovery tactics? Ramp up. Yeah. You know. Cycling. All that. And the other thing is, and this was uh, Rubio's um, point, which is so true. More training is not better in CrossFit. Better training is better. Mm. So he said, a highly intense Fran is better training than two medium intense Frans. So if you didn't, so don't. A great point. Don't do it multiple times. Just do it once and kill yourself on it don't keep doing it over and over again the crossfit open is coming up guys give it your all on that friday don't come back on sunday trying to do it again exactly. give it everything you got he says we understand why people want to do that it's fun right yeah right they want to be in the gym they want right. to be social but that in relative intensity is what is 
important. He's so important. It's so important. And he said, that's why you see these guys who do CrossFit one hour a day, they come into class, they get incrementally better only on an hour a day. How is that? Because their intensity relative is pretty high. Yeah. So they don't have to train two or three hours a day. If you take that one hour and you max out your intensity for that day, you are going to get better. That's a great point. Yeah, I mean, I would I would have been nodding my head so hard, dude. That's what I was doing. I was like, yeah. Rubio, you're speaking yeah. to me. Yeah. Um, and then they talked about the glucose, like how does Chandler or Smith eat Snickers or whatever during a comp? Mm. And he said basically, first of all, elite athletes need very nutrient dense foods. Right. It's really hard to take in during a competition cycle all of the stuff that you need. Mm -hmm. So he's eating that stuff because it's on top of what he normally eats. He said, I bet you if you watch his dinner, it's going to be really healthy. Yeah. He's not replacing other foods in his diet with the Snickers. He has to eat it on top of what he's normally eating. That makes sense. So these people just see them eating, you know, sugar stuff. Yeah. And so they, that they can feel better about eating sugar stuff. Right. <laughs> but it's like, no, you're replacing other foods with that. Don't do that. Right. And if you're at that level and training at that level, then yes, you might consider that. Um, did they go into macros at all with performance they did they did not yeah just higher carb yes so again that's that was just uh questions thrown out from the audience yep um the last couple were pretty quick there was a, a guy from the icu i can't even pronounce his name quadwo kayot or Ma mantang okay uh basically talking about how covid was really horrible for everyone you were socially isolated in your home you had to stay inside all the gyms were closed uh, if you were, he said when he ran the ICU uh, for COVID, he never saw a healthy patient in the ICU. All the people in the ICU had obesity, metabolic disorders, some sort of problem. And he said it's $52,000 a day for a, a COVID patient to be in the ICU. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you're on a ventilator, you lose 2% of your muscle mass a day. Oh, yeah. And so he's like, don't. You know, make sure you prevent yourself from going to the yeah, ICU. Don't go to the ICU. Yeah. Um, one of the more interesting talks was Chris Palmer. He's a associate, or sorry, assistant professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. He talked about how autism, ADHD, bipolar depression is like skyrocketing. Yep. Four hundred percent over forty years. Um, a lot of treatments work, like medications and psychotherapy, but there's treatment resistance in twenty to sixty percent of people, okay. where they don't really respond well. Okay. And uh, they don't know why these mental disorders are occurring, just risk factors. And all of these mental disorders seem to, they're sort of the same. Like, if you have ADHD, you're more likely to have autism. If you have bipolar, you're more likely to be depressed. Like, they, like, they all kind of are one big global issue. Okay. And it's really hard to tease out. Like, you don't have pure autism, pure ADHD. Like, they're all kind of a conglomerate. Okay. And they all are linked to obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and Alzheimer's. So if you have diabetes, you're more likely to have one of these mental disorders and vice versa. So if you go to a diabetic clinic, you'll, you're will you more likely to find people with depression, bipolar, autism, and, mm. and all that. So he feels like all of these disorders are metabolic disorders. One of them are metab metabolic disorders of the brain. The other ones are metabolic physical disorders, but they all have a central mechanism which is in common because the brain is an organ a tissue if you have a metabolic metabolic disorder of the body you're going to have the it's the same part of the body right. it's just the brain right so they think well he now to distill it all down he thinks that it's in the mitochondria which is the powerhouse of the cell that's what they say but anyway so the upshot was exercise alone does not seem to improve mental health in all cases because of insulin resistance. So if you have a metabolic disorder like diabetes or obesity, you are insulin resistant. Uh -huh. Exercise may not alone be sufficient. Right. So it's gonna have to be, you gotta kind of break that cycle. Okay. And some of that might be diet, like a ketogenic diet. Mm -hmm. So he was really big into the ketogenic diet, might be helpful for depression, Alzheimer's, schizophrenia. They use it for alcoholics and detox. Um, it was, it's probably the only diet that's been thoroughly researched because they used it for epilepsy treatment mm -hmm. um, and they still do. Yep. So anyway, that really threw me for a loop and I was like, hmm, I might look into ketogenic a little more, might look at this link between mind and body mm -hmm. for disorders mm -hmm. and start thinking about that for people because that was pretty interesting stuff. That is interesting. Yeah.
that's always there. That that ketogenic, high fat, low carb, it's always there. And I feel like there's there's and it's been around for a long time too. Um, the last two were uh, the Phoenix, which was a sober, active community model treating substance abuse with CrossFit um, type. Tre- uh, Those are always cool active. stories. Yes, and it was all about social connection, and so that really made me think more about. If you just go to a CrossFit gym and you just work out and go home and you don't make any connections, you're probably losing out on a potentially huge benefit Mm. because they keep talking about it throughout the course of the day, like connection, social interaction, all those things are super important. And then the last thing was Tommy Wood, future-proofing your brain, basically talking about how brain is like a muscle. Uh, You have to raise your peak performance because as you get older, it declines, just like with athletic performance. Right. If you start by being able to bench 300 when you get to 75, as long as you keep working out, you probably can bench more than if you started at a lower number. Absolutely. And so, so get to a higher peak. Get to your while higher, you can. You, right. And then avoid the dips. And right. dips are, at least for the brain, stuff where you're not using it, like retirement for a lot of people. Boof. Right. Uh, you know, not doing things. Right. Like so, exercise is huge because you're learning new skills. So this is why. And I'm going to be telling people, if you just do single unders your entire life in the gym and you never try to learn double unders, you're missing out on neurologic growth. Yeah. Uh, That's a great perspective. You should. You should. All, you should always be trying to learn new skills. What what what, what movement are you teaching this upcoming Thursday? <laughs> Wait. When, uh, double, double unders? Double unders. Bring right. muscle ups. Bring muscle ups yeah. and yeah. bar muscle ups. So, so I, learn new stuff. Learn, learn new, new skills. S- exactly. So that skills-based movement. That's why Peloton will never work as mm. well as skills-based movement because you're working more parts of your brain. Yeah, become a deadbeat. Yeah, don't be, uh, yeah, it's infinitely adaptable. So anyway, um, to sum it up, I actually I was sitting next to Sean Rocket, who I didn't even know. He's the CrossFit uh, physician, the games guy. Mm-hmm. And he talked about, you know, Brooke Wells why, when he was there. The most interesting thing, because I asked him, I said, hey, listen, when you're at the games and people have injuries, it, they don't know you from Adam probably, and it's really hard to get buy-in. Like if they have an injury and you're giving them recommendations, and he said, "Yeah, one of the hardest one was like Roman Krennikov, okay, because it's like it's not you don't have to get the trust of the athlete when they're injured. You got to get the trust of their coach. Mm-hmm. But in this case, it was like coach, translator, and Roman. <laughs> yeah, right. And when you're telling them like maybe you shouldn't keep going, and they're like, "Can I keep going?" And he's like, "I'm not really recommending it." Brooke Wells actually gives a huge shout out to Sean Rocket in her book. Awesome. Um, about when she dislocated her, her elbow, elbow on that snatch. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he's a really cool, laid back guy. Really cool. liked him. That's sweet. So yeah, that those that's that was a really good rundown. That was that was a great rundown of who was talking and what was talked about. And I think there's enough in there what you just said that immediately like, I I almost wanted to start writing things down that you were saying. Just things to look into, perspectives to try and get to uh, that are going to give you this full picture, all in, better health, better fitness, better performance, and longevity. And I'm, I even like that you just said, like, would you play around the ketogenic diet? Because I do think we should all be looking into new things, right? I mean, you can apply that to the person that doesn't want to do double unders, right? You're going to challenge yourself to learn something new. And maybe even try the skill or, or act of a ketogenic diet or different movements or having a different perspective. When you walk out of there after that weekend, did you have that kind of like CrossFit high that a lot of our coaches say they have when they get like their level one research, level two research? Like, was it like, did you walk out like kind of fired up, motivated? It gave me perspective that, yes, I have to keep trying. Like the try is so important. And when you stop trying and lose your push that's when your body your brain start to decline right and so it Great gave point. me a lot of motivation to keep working at it because you can't stop you can't be like i can snatch 115 i'm gonna i feel comfortable at that no i will always i realize from this i will always have to keep trying right i might not succeed right but i have to keep trying because yeah, that process over result you yeah. got you have to in order to push your body in order to to stave off that decline and and to make sure that you are as functional and and you live healthy for as long as possible. Yeah, that's something I always want to get across to to people that we coach, people that we're around is if you feel like you're like, "Ah, oh, 
I put my time in. Like I'm good. If you think you're gonna be neutral, you're probably going back. You're going backwards. So if you're so if you're no longer trying to keep your foot on the gas, you know, it's not just hey, I'll I'll stay where I'm at. You are going backwards. Yep. You know, there's no there's no sting where you're at. Yep. You know, you're either trying to go forward or you're in reverse. Yep. Where do you think this future of CrossFit health, what it can do for CrossFit affiliates, um, and and CrossFitters worldwide? Do you see something left to obtain? Uh, I'm interested about these integrated health clinics. I think that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I think that could help both providers and, uh, you know, and we talked about that. What if you had a nutritionist on site, a physio, all these different uh, allied health professions working mm -hmm. together with mm -hmm. CrossFit? Could be some powerful stuff. Yeah. I, I think that's a, a, a big future component to CrossFit is making health. Because right now, in my opinion, CrossFit is more about working out yep. and exercise. Yep. And if you can get the outsiders, the people that aren't in here yet, into, hey, I'm going to see my doctor first, then I go to CrossFit, then I, I think that is a big part of their pu future growth. I could see my dad doing that. Mm, that's awesome. All right, well, thanks, Sam, and thank you to CrossFit for, for putting together the, the CrossFit Health Summit. Um, we will try to keep you guys posted on if and when there will be another one. Did they say anything about that? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if they're probably giving some internal feedback All right, was this worth it? How much did it cost? Is it going to help produce more results? Uh, but I would, I would assume that you'll probably see someone, see another one come across at some point that anyone could sign up for. All right. Thank you guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you everybody for taking the time out of your day to listen to the Herd Fit podcast. Be on the lookout for next week's episode.